Where Stands a Winged Sentry, is this a novel or a memoir? Where Stands a Winged Sentry, which is this, um, it is a memoir. It was produced by Margaret Kennedy, um, who is much more well known as the author of The Constant Nymph from the 1920s. During the Second World War she was writing a diary and towards the end of 1940 she decided she had to get her diaries safely away because 1940 was the year of the fall of France, it was the year of Dunkirk, it was the year of the Battle of Britain and the Blitz. Everything at that time looked as if the Germans and Hitler were going to invade. So she was determined to have this record of what that year was like um, sent to safety. So she sent it to a friend in America and the American friend said we have to get this published and so it was published in 1941 by Yale University Press. It's not really fictionalised but she's changed some names, she's left out relevant details so people can be less identifiable and she shapes it as a narrative, as a linear narrative but she interposes an awful lot of her herself arguing with herself and with opinions of other people trying to understand what's going on. So it's more like a memoir than a novel but it's still an absolutely wonderful read. You are immersed into what it was like in 1940 wondering what was going to happen next and it's just extraordinary. A really really good book. Who is the woman on the cover and why did you choose her for this book? <laughs> okay so the woman on the cover is, well the picture is called My, My Favourite Model Mrs. David Wright. So that's who it is. And David Wright was a Second World War artist and he was he specialised in pin-up girls, women with very little clothes on, and his wife Esme was one of his favourite models. And this is, is an unusual picture of her because she's got clothes on, which is fine, and she looks beautiful. But I really liked her expression of really not caring what you think and looking at you going so what are you going to throw at me next what is this it's challenging it's interrogative and i think it reflects a lot of what this novel is like or what this memoir is like this book is like margaret kennedy's voice takes no fools she will not stand any nonsense she questions everything she's not afraid to be sentimental but she's not going to stand any nonsense and she's pretty much in charge of what she is doing for her children and supporting her husband. Her husband stayed in London to work, he was a, a, a judge and he was a fire watcher at night, but she was in charge of her, her, two, her, her three children plus the young child of a friend who was seriously ill. So she took this young girl under her wing, so she had a family of four children and she had the nanny and that was it. And she took them from Surrey down to Cornwall they went to St Ives, basically they were evacuated to St Ives and they spent 1940 um, in Cornwall waiting for the invasion. Given that this has never been published in the UK before, what will readers discover about Margaret Kennedy when they read it? Margaret Kennedy, at the time this was written, was much more well known as a playwright as well as for being the author of The Constant Nymph and a couple of other novels. Um, readers now mainly know her because of the constant nymph. So you have the sense of the 1920s flawed romance in, in the Austrian Tyrol, that's what the constant nymph is about, and about a very strange and eccentric bohemian family with amoral ideas and um, a lot of female sacrifice. This novel is about women standing up for themselves and doing everything for themselves supporting the community, also asking an awful lot of questions and being an awful lot more independent. I think I think readers are going to find Margaret Kennedy seriously interesting as a writer they should rediscover once they've read this. It's a very very human book because of most of it, it's pretty much all in her her own voice and that is an advantage if you want to discover an author to read a memoir by them first and then move on to their fiction. That's a really natural way to do it. And I think this is going to bring Margaret Kennedy back to a much wider audience. Why is this wartime memoir different from other diaries of the war by women? Um, it asks a lot more political questions. The other wartime memoirs that I've read tend to be very much centred on the domestic, on the struggles of balancing a place to, a place to live, finding a place to live, and then 
depending on where women were posted in the UK to work for war work and their love lives and trying to get some relaxation time and good lord can they find a man to keep company with and where can they wash their stockings and how can they find food and rationing all that domestic detail that tends to be what the female memoirs of the period that are published now are like now that may be a choice of the publishers now that they are looking for that kind of work but this book is about politics it's about national identity it's about our relationship as britons with mainland europe it's about being european it's about cultural identity it's about so many things that reflect on what Britain in the last two or three years has gone through with the Brexit um, change in our lives and very strangely it resonates deeply with how we've all got through the pandemic in the last year because so many things that Margaret Kennedy's voice says in this book about enduring a time of huge uncertainty being trapped, not able to see family and friends, being unable to move very far because of restrictions, legal restrictions. Again and again, the reader will think, crikey, this is just what we've had to do ourselves. So it's a remarkable book from very many reasons, resonating with very current history in Britain and actually in the rest of the world, as well as with the history of the Second World War. You've described this as Mrs Miniver with the gloves off. T tell us why. <laughs> Mrs Miniver. Mrs Miniver was a, originally a series of newspaper articles in the Times, columns, a bit like Bridget Jones' Diary, which came out about 25, 20, 23 years ago. Um, and Mrs Miniver was written by a journalist whose pen name was Jan Struther, that wasn't her real name and I've temporarily forgotten her real name. And it was just about the life of an upper middle class lady in Kensington and how she went about her day and, and just the beautifulness of it and the gloriousness and choosing a green diary and coming home to tea and crumpets with brand new library books. It was a sense of the good things if you were moneyed and celebrating the good things in life. And it didn't say much about the war because a lot of it was about the build up to the war, the phony war of 1939, but it was so positive and so glossy. This book, Where Stands a Winged Century, is not glossy and it's angry, it's resentful, the voice of the narrator is furious at some aspects of what the government is or is not doing, absolutely appalled at what's happening outside Britain. Mrs Miniver couldn't care two hoots about what's happening outside Britain because it's focused on a very different set of values. This one, Margaret Kennedy's voice, is challenging and unvarnished and just so much more honest, I think.